Good morning. If I could please have everyone silence their electronic devices. So good morning and welcome to our Memorial Day ceremony. I'm Jeff Chunglo, Director of Veteran Services for the Town of Arlington, and I'd like to introduce our official party. Father Mark Bishop, Mr. Sandy Pooler, Town Manager, Mr. Eric Helmuth, Chair of the Select Board, State Representative Rogers, State Representative Garbley, and our keynote speaker, Major General Retired William Rep. Would you please rise? Members of the Arlington Police Department and Arlington Fire Department will parade the colors. Parade the colors. The members of the Boston Skyline Chorus will now sing our national anthem. Father Mark Bishop is a Navy veteran and pastor at St. Camillus Parish, Arlington, Belmont, and St. Agnes Parish in Arlington. You will now deliver our invocation. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you for asking me to pray within my tradition today, and I invite you to pray within your tradition along with me. On this Memorial Day, we gather in humble gratitude for all the sacrifices of the men and women of the armed services, and that they have endured to ensure our freedoms. Those that have died deserve our gratitude and honor. Please hold our servicemen and women in your strong arms, dear God. Cover them with your sheltering grace and your presence as they stand in the gap for our protection. We also remember the families of our troops, especially 
Gold Star families. We ask for your unique blessing to fill their homes, and we pray for your peace, provision, hope, and strength to fill their lives. May the members of our armed services be supplied with the courage to face each day, and may they trust in the Lord's mighty power to accomplish each task. Let our military brothers and sisters <clears throat> feel our love and support. Lord of all nations, may we take time to reflect on the great blessings we share as a nation and as a people. Our blessings have come at a high cost to others. May we remember these sacrifices always with deep gratitude. We ask that you grant wisdom to the leaders of the armed forces, guide and direct them in their decisions. May they be led by your will and your heart as they pursue our nation's freedom. We continue to pray for peace in our world. Lord, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Please be seated. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the release of U.S. service members who were in prison during the Vietnam War. Members of the armed forces were held as prisoners of war in significant numbers from 1964 to 1973. Thirteen prisons and prison camps were used to house U.S. prisoners in North Vietnam. As part of Operation Homecoming on February 12, 1973, the first of 591 U.S. prisoners began to be repatriated and additional flights continued until late March. On March 26, 1964, the first U.S. service member was imprisoned. Captain Floyd Thompson's plane was brought down by enemy fire and he spent nearly nine years in captivity, making him the longest held POW in American history. U.S. prisoners of war in North Vietnam were subjected to extreme torture and malnutrition during their captivity. The aim of the torture was typically not to acquire military information, but instead it was to break the will of the prisoners, both individually and as a group, so they could obtain written or recorded statements from prisoners that criticized America and praised how North Vietnamese treated them. During the war, only 37 service members escaped captivity. Following Operation Homecoming, a total of 684 POWs returned home. Currently, there are still 1,582 veterans that remain classified as unaccounted for. And there remains 100, uh, 1,056 veterans that have been identified and repatriated. At this time, I'd like to call on our town manager, Sandy Pooler, to offer his remarks. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you all for being here. Um, Arlington, uh, you're going to hear some remarks from me because I was a history major, so I'm going to talk a little bit about history. Arlington has a uh, special connection with this Memorial Day, as many of you know. Uh, the town in 1807 uh, joined with Belmont to become monotomy. Uh, but in 1867, it changed its name to Arlington in honor of those buried at Arlington National Cemetery. I brought today this sword, which was my great, great grandfather's. He served in uh, the Civil War. This sword hangs in my uncle's house. My great-great-grandfather was a surgeon, uh, first in the mass voluntary militia, um, and then in the National Army. He had to perform surgery at Antietam uh, and uh, spent uh, many, many years traveling throughout the South uh, on, in the Union Army, obviously, uh, serving our troops. Uh, I've always been very proud of this sword and of the service that he gave to our country to help keep this country together. People sometimes talk about who won the Civil War. I often think it's the United States that won the Civil War.
because we stayed together as a unified country. Memorial Day started not really by any official act, by a number of citizens simply placing flowers on the graves of those who died in the war. And eventually, by 1867, by a proclamation by a US general asking people to remember those who had died. They died to keep our country together. They died to give us the freedom that we have today and our ability to come together and honor them. And so today, I join you in the quiet contemplation that we have uh, for those who have passed before us, in the taps that we play for them, in our public procession to lay a wreath, and marching together uh, to formally honor those who gave their lives for their country. So uh, I join with you who are veterans, and, and thank you for your service. I join with you who have family members who are veterans, and I join with all the families in the United States who at one point have lost uh, a family member to uh, a war in this country, and we all honor them and hope for peace in the future. Um, I just also want to say, not part of my official remarks, and Jeff won't like this, but I want to thank Jeff too for all the work that he has done for this town, for helping bring together this ceremony, for honoring the veterans in this town, and for bringing a sense of peace and recognition to, to many. So thank you, Jeff. You're right, Sandy, I didn't like that. <laughs> Um, at this time, I'd like to invite our select board chair, Mr. Eric Helmuth, to offer his remarks. Good morning. It's my privilege to be here to represent my colleagues on the select board at this important and somber occasion. I'd like to recognize uh, Diane Mahan, John Hurd, Steve DeCourcy, and Lynn Diggins, who are here with me this morning, and I'm proud to see you all here. I'm also proud to welcome the veterans who proudly serve in the Arlington Police and Fire Departments. It's good to see you here this morning. Finally, I extend my appreciation to our guest speaker, General Rapp, who is a four-year member of our town, and I turned to him this morning and I said, welcome home, sir. It's good to have you. Finally, I must also thank Jeff Chunglow for reminding us how important today is for organizing this beautiful ceremony and for his service to his country and to our town. To respect his wishes, I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to hand Jeff a proclamation that the select board voted on at our last meeting. Jeff, we love you. We appreciate what you've done for this community and you leave it a better place. Today we gather to honor the memory of the more than one million people who have died in service to their country. They left the safety of their hometowns, the comfort of their family and their friends to defend our freedom and preserve the peace, and not only ours, but for countless people all over the globe. We also recognize and honor their families, spouses, children, parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, whose lives were forever changed. To our Gold Star family members here today, thank you. We owe you and your loved ones who gave their lives in service a debt of gratitude that can never be repaid. We reflect today on the qualities of these women and men who gave their lives for our nation. Their love of country and the ideals on which it was founded. Their loyalty to their brothers and sisters in arms. Their courage, which is not the absence of fear, but the resolve to do one's duty in the face of it. Their selflessness, 
willingly putting, putting themselves in harm's way for the sake of others. Words are not enough to honor their sacrifice. Words can never be enough. So what can we do? We can remember our fallen heroes with respect and gratitude, not just today, but every day. We can live our lives with the awareness that the freedoms and the opportunities that we enjoy today, we owe to them. We can listen to the stories of their family and friends, and in so doing, understand the people that they were. We can support our veterans and ensure that they get the care, respect, and opportunities they deserve. And finally, we can work for a world that is worthy of their sacrifice, a world of compassion, understanding, tolerance, respect for the rule of law and liberty, and we can remain vigilant for the forces of tyranny and oppression that threaten so many corners of the world and even here at home. May the memory of those we honor today inspire us to be the best version of ourselves for Arlington, for Massachusetts, for our country, and for the world. God bless our veterans. God bless this great country. I'd like to invite Representative David Rogers to offer his remarks. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you on this Memorial Day. And uh, I, too, want to thank Jeff Shungalo for his amazing service to this town. And um, when I thought about what I might say today, I, um, uh, it occurred to me something that happened um, in our family. My mom uh, was in a terrible car accident. And uh, fortunately, the paramedics who showed up on the scene realized she couldn't be taken in an ambulance to the hospital, she needed a chopper. She needed a medevac, and, or else she wouldn't make it. And uh, she was medevaced for trauma surgery and was in intensive care for almost two months. And uh, there was a surgeon there, Dr. John Pryor, and he saved her life. And uh, because she was in intensive care so long, I got to know him really well. I was there visiting. He would make rounds almost every day. And it's just a remarkable human being. He was board certified in three different areas of medicine. He said he would have been board certified in a fourth area, but his wife would have divorced him if he went for the certification. So, and uh, he was literally a legendary, uh, famous surgeon, a brilliant guy. And for all of his accomplishment, incredibly down to earth, just the nicest guy you'd ever meet. Well, it turns out uh, not only was he a brilliant surgeon, he was a reservist in the U.S. Army, and um, he was called and deployed to Iraq, uh, where, uh, sadly, he, he lost his life uh, in, a, in an explosion, an attack. And um, so um, it's just a reminder of some of the incredible people that we have in our service uh, that do amazing things for our country and um, leave behind a legacy. Um, and so um, today I'll think of him and the many other veterans we've lost. And, uh, and um, uh, God bless America and thank you. I'd like to invite Sean Garbley to offer his remarks. Good morning. I will repeat what everybody has honorably said about Jeff Chunglo. Jeff, we are going to miss you. You have been a safety net for our veterans across this community. We can't thank you enough. Would also like to thank our Veterans Council for everything they do in working with Jeff to support our men and women veterans across this town. And it is an honor for me to be here with our Gold Star family members. Uh, your commitment and sacrifice cannot be understated, and it is an honor for all of us to be in your presence. And to our veterans who are here 
in the hall and across the town of Arlington, everything you have done for this nation is a sacrifice that we will never be able to repay uh, your incredible service. And supporting and honoring our veterans is something we should be doing every day, as we did last Veterans Day. And we can do that in a number of ways, whether it's around employment, whether it's mental health services, whether it's the most basic principle of housing. Supporting our veterans is something that we all should be recommitted to doing every single day. But today, we honor those who gave everything, those who sacrificed their happiness, their families, future happiness, those who did not come home. And it is important for each of us to reflect upon that. Think of Arlington High or any high school across this incredible country. A young person not older than probably half the age of many of the people in this room made the decision to go across seas and into enemy territory and potentially sacrifice everything. Their happiness, their family's happiness, their future, their family's future. For an ideal, for the principles and values that we hold so dear in this country. Many of them did not come home. So today, as in this solemn day, as we pay tribute to the men and women who did not come home, it's not a day to feel guilty. It's not a day to feel guilty about hamburgers or what you do during the weekend with your family. That's not what this day is about. It's not to create a guilt trip. But this day is not about hamburgers, it's not about hot dogs, it's not about game seven. This day is about coming together as a country and honoring those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. That's what today is all about. And that's what we do here as a country, as a commonwealth, and as a town to pay tribute to those soldiers who left Arlington High and every high school across this country at far too young of an age and who did not come home. Thank you. I was very pleased that General Rapp responded to my email about his willingness to participate today as our keynote speaker. It's nice to have a, an official Arlingtonian to uh, offer remarks. But um, William Rapp is a retired Army Major General, educator, college administrator, and proven leader with more than 30, 33 years as an active duty Army officer. During his career, he served over five years in Germany, one year in Japan, and three and a half years in Iraq and Afghanistan. He commanded an airborne engineer company in the first Gulf War, an engineer brigade in Iraq from 2005 to 2006, and was deputy commander of support for US forces in Afghanistan from 2011 to 2012. He served as the Army Senior Liaison to the US Congress, Commandant of the United States Military Academy, and most recently served as a Commandant of the US Army War College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. His research interests include civil and military relations and organizational leadership. His military career included the following commands. Commander of Northwestern Division of the Army Corps of Engineers, from 2008 to 2009, Commandant of Cadets, U.S. Military Academy, West Point, 2009 to 2011,
Commanding General, National Support Element, U.S. Forces, Afghanistan, 2011 to 2012. Chief of Legislative Liaison, U.S. Army, 2012 to 2014. Commandant, U.S. Army War College and Commanding General, Carlisle Barracks, from 2014 to 2017. He conducts frequent lectures on military affairs and the, at the Harvard Kennedy School and Harvard University. Uh, he did a brief stint there for his service. A distinguished graduate of West Point in 1984, he also holds a master's degree in strategic studies from the U.S. Army War College and a master's and Ph.D. in political science from Stanford University. It's my pleasure to introduce Major General William Rapp. Hey, good morning to you all. To uh, the veterans who are out there, uh, especially those veterans that served in uh, war zones uh, in our nation's history, uh, this day is, is special for you. It's not Veterans Day, which comes in November, but it is when you especially remember the colleagues who are with you that did not come home. It's a day to, uh, to remember them. Today's the unofficial first day of summer. Uh, it's a long weekend for most of us, and we pull out the grill, and we gather friends and family for the warmth of, and fun of summertime. But amidst, amidst all of that sunshine and fun, it's fitting for us to take the time today re to remember why they call this Memorial Day. This federal holiday was set aside to honor those that gave their lives so that we could live free and celebrate this weekend and so many others with friends and family. In late May of 1866, after, only after about a year at the, since the guns had gone silent at Appomattox, General John Logan organized what was then called Decorations Day to place flowers on the graves of the Civil War dead. Logan wanted to be sure that the sacrifice of so many was not quickly forgotten. After World War I, the country changed its name to Memorial Day to recognize the ultimate sacrifice of military men and women from all wars. At national cemeteries across this country, small American flags have been placed at the headstones of these brave and trepid souls who stepped forward, served with honor, and did not come home. My family and I lived for a few years uh, at, right outside of Arlington National Cemetery. And it's a ritual for the old guard soldiers of 3rd U.S. Infantry to place a small American flag at every single headstone there. 400,000 uh, honored dead are buried in that one piece of hollowed ground. I recommend someday soon, if you haven't done it already, to walk over to the intersection of Mass Ave and Broadway and spend some time at the memorial wall there. You'll find the names of those in the military in all of our nation's wars up to the late 90s. Those marked with a small asterisk gave their lives for this country. And Arlington has a long and proud history of fighting to defend all that is right in this great land. Jason Russell, Jason Winship, Jabez Wyman's names, they're all there from their deaths on the 19th of April, 1775, not far from where we are sitting today. The American Civil War saw 42 killed from Arlington, then called Monotomy. World War I had 24 killed. The town had then been renamed to Arlington. World War II took a toll on this community. 156 were killed in the four terrible years in which the United States and others fought Imperial Japan, Nazi Germany, and fascist Italy. 14 more were killed in Korea, and nine were killed in Vietnam. There's a single asterisk next to a name in the wars after Vietnam to the year 1997. John Patrick Connor, a Navy SEAL officer who died heroically on the small airfield of Patia in western Panama on 20 December 1989. Joan Connor is here with us today. Thank you. We honor your son.
At the core of our military lie unique themes, the selfless desire to serve, a strong desire to do what's right and just, and the willingness, if called upon in the heat of battle, to sacrifice oneself for our teammates to defend this nation. Those brave men and women were supported now and now grieved by their families and loved ones. Those who left behind, or those left behind the fallen bear the most difficult of burdens, and we honor them as well. With their lives, these brave soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have bought for us the right to use this day however we choose. They would not begrudge your barbecue. They might get a bit upset if you overcooked the steaks. They would not be offended um, unless you failed to take some bit of time today to remember them, to keep them in mind. These true American heroes fought as they did so that you could live your lives with a sense of peace and security that allows you to fully enjoy days like this. So take that moment to reflect upon their service and sacrifice. Lawrence Binion was a British poet who volunteered at age 46 to serve in a field hospital near the killing fields of Verdun in 1915. And he wrote a poem, a couple of lines of which about the young men that he watched marching forward to the front, knowing in his heart that many that he saw would not have the chance to grow old. He wrote, they went with songs to the battle, they were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds encountered, and they fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not worry them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We must not break faith with those who have died on our behalf. We must strive to honor their sacrifice in many small ways every day. We must remember them. President Harry Truman, soon after uh, he took over the presidency in the spring of 1945, the war was still going on with both Germany and Japan. And he said the following, our debt to the heroic men and valiant women in the service of our country can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. America will never forget their sacrifices. Because of these sacrifices, the dawn of justice and freedom throughout the world slowly casts its gleam across the horizon. The respect and admiration that we give our fallen, hopefully not only on this day, but in silent or vocal tribute year round, pays tribute to their memory. Their stories must not be forgotten. By sharing these stories, we keep their memories alive, and we inspire ourselves to create a better world, a stronger nation, kinder communities. It's up to us to use the gifts that they secured with their ultimate sacrifice, to do as much good as possible, and to honor that debt that can never be repaid. Joan, if you would allow me to talk just briefly about your son. Patrick Connor grew up in Situate in Arlington, and he attended WPI in Worcester. Upon graduation, he joined the United States Navy and volunteered for SEAL training, earning his Trident badge, signifying qualification as a U.S. Navy SEAL. Lieutenant Connor was privileged to become a leader in golf platoon of SEAL Team 4, which was based out of Virginia Beach and focused on Central and South America. On the evening of 20 December 1989, 48 members of SEAL Team 4 would, uh, were tasked to seize the airfield at Patia and destroy Manuel Noriega's uh, private aircraft so that he could not escape. Panamanian forces were in unexpectedly heavy strength at the airfield, and John Connor was killed while purposefully drawing fire so that it could take pressure off of the members of his team. Only age 25, Connor earned the Silver Star and Purple Heart for his valor that evening. He's buried here at Mount Pleasant Cemetery 
and his name is found on our town's memorial wall. For me on this day, I remember colleagues that I served with who died in combat. As you heard, I commanded Bravo Company, 27th Airborne Engineers, and we were working to clear mines on the north side of the runway at Asalman Airfield in southern Iraq on February 26, 1991. Captain Mario Fajardo, who commanded Alpha Company, 27th Engineers, and five of his men, First Lieutenant Terry Plunk, Sergeant First Class Russell Smith, Staff Sergeant Michael Harris, Sergeant Brian Scott, and Corporal Luis Delgado were killed that day clearing mines on the south side of the runway. We came from different backgrounds. Mario was a Citadel graduate, and I'm a West Pointer. But in Iraq, we were brothers, and I think about him often. On Memorial Day, we should reflect upon the experiences of our fallen loved ones and those like John Connor, whom we may not have known personally, but tomorrow and in the days that follow, we must act and ensure that their sacrifice was not in vain. We honor them by being the very best versions of ourselves every single day. We honor them by being good neighbors to each other and good citizens to this country. We honor them as William Wordsworth wrote, for our little, nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and of love. We honor them by fully appreciating that it is a privilege to live in this great country of ours. And finally, we honor them by remembering that the freedom we enjoy is not free. I join this whole crowd in recognizing the wonderful support that Jeff uh, has given to the veterans of this community for so many uh, years. Um, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. Hey, uh, thank you very much. People often thank me for my service, and I am absolutely uh, humbled by that. But I will tell you, I think I got more than I gave. Um, the ability to serve and, and wear the colors of this nation is something that uh, uh, is a treasure. Thank you for... So Massachusetts, a couple of years ago, created the Medal of Fidelity, and it has been established to be presented to the next of kin of a service member or veteran who died as a result of a service-connected disability or illness. I would like to ask Marilyn Dolan Goldstein to stand. Her husband, Captain Alan Goldstein, was a Vietnam veteran who passed away on February 24th as a result of exposure to Agent Orange. At this time, General Rapp and I will present the award to Mrs. Dolan.
At this time, the Skyline Chorus will perform Let Freedom Ring. So the following presentation is a time-honored tradition in the Navy. And yes, I have to go Navy. When a sailor retires, a folded flag is ceremoniously passed from sailor to sailor. And it reflects the different ranks that they have achieved throughout their career. The retiree then presents a flag to a spouse or significant other in honor of their support and sacrifices that they provided during their military career. And this ceremony is often referred to as Old Glory. I would like the members of the Arlington Veterans Council to come forward. So I'd like to thank Anne-Marie Russo, Bill Hainer, and Steve Sautel for their support for me while serving as your Director of Veteran Services, but they have done an awesome job and I can't thank them enough. <laughs>
I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident, I am arrogant, and I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher, my colors a little truer, and I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshiped, I am saluted, I am respected, I am revered, I am loved, and I am feared. I have fought in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, Guam, Okinawa, Tarawa, Korea, Vietnam, the Persian Gulf, and scores of places long forgotten by all except those who were there with me. I was there. I led my sailors, marine, airmen, and soldiers. I followed them, I watched over them, and they loved me. I was on a small hill on Iwo Jima. I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired, but my sailors and marines cheered me, and I was proud. I was at Ground Zero in New York City on September 11th as cowardly fanatics attacked America. I was raised from the ashes of once proud buildings by brave firefighters, heroes who risked their lives to save others, showing the world that America, although bloodied, will never be beaten. Those who would destroy me cannot win, for I am the symbol of freedom of one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. And when it is done by those who I have served with in battle, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the surly bonds of earth, and from my vantage point on the moon, I stand watch over the uncharted new frontiers of space. I have been a silent witness to all of America's finest hours, but my finest hour comes when I am torn in strips to be used as bandages for my wounded comrades on the battlefield. When I fly at half-mast to honor my soldiers, and when I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving mother, at the gravesite of her fallen son or daughter, I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wave, dear God. Long may I wave. Retire the colors. I'd like to once again invite the Boston Skyline Chorus to perform Hallelujah.
So I'd like to thank the Skyline Corps for your support of our ceremonies over the years. So thank you very much. I appreciate everything you do. You do a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Memorial Day honors the service and devotion of our fallen heroes and serves as a solemn reminder of the extraordinary courage and selflessness they displayed in the face of danger. It's also an important opportunity for us to reflect on the importance of military service for the preservation of our freedom and the safety and security of our nation. This Memorial Day, it is our responsibility to offer prayers and thanks for these brave men and individuals and their sacrifices. Let us not forget the remarkable level of selfless service that these men and women provided, especially those who paid the ultimate price. We can do our part by honoring their memory through acts of reverence, respect, and remembrance. At this time, I'd like you to please stand and join me in a moment of silence. I'd like to invite Father Bishop to offer our benediction. In the quiet sanctuaries of our own hearts, let, let each of us name and call on the one whose power over us is great and gentle, firm and forgiving, holy and healing. You who create us, who sustain us, who call us to live in peace, hear our prayers this day. Hear our prayer for all who have died, whose hearts and hopes are known to you alone. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own and give us hearts as generous as theirs. Hear our prayer for those who gave their lives in the service of others and accept the gift of their sacrifice. Help us to shape and make a world where we will lay down the arms of war and turn our swords into plowshares for a harvest of justice and peace. Cover those who grieve the loss of their loved ones and let your healing be the hope in our hearts. Hear our prayer this day and in your mercy answer us. In the name of all that is holy and good we pray, amen. And shipmate, fair winds and following seas. Thank you. Peace. Thank you. Please be seated. So this concludes our indoor portion of the ceremony. Um, I'd like to thank all of our speakers for their comments today and reflections. Thank you very much. So for those of you who would like to go with us to Mount Pleasant Cemetery for our wreath-laying ceremonies, we'll gather in front of the town hall in a few minutes and proceed to the cemetery. Uh, for those that would like to go but have issues with mobility, we will have a van outside uh, to take people down. Um, so that will be in the front as well. And again, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the police and fire department, honor guards, and their service to the community. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank everyone that I had the opportunity to work with in this community. Arlington is a great community. Um, you're all very lucky residents, but um, a great group of people. I can't say enough about them and uh, we'll just leave it at that. So thank you very much, and we'll see you out front in a few minutes.
During the battles fought throughout the Civil War, a total of 2.2 million Union soldiers conducted military operations from 1861 to 1865. Over 204,000 soldiers lost their lives during these battles, with over 476,000 suffering battle injuries. And additionally, there were over 413,000 non-combat deaths. During the Spanish-American War, conducted between 1898 and 1901, over 306,000 men and women served our country. Of this number, 362 lost their lives, while over 1,600 received combat-related injuries, and there were over 2,600 non-combat deaths. This time, Major General Rapp will lay our ceremonial wreath. The Monotomy Minutemen will render honors. During World War I, 4.7 million service members served between 1917 and 1918. Over 53,500 lost their lives, and over 402,000 suffered combat injuries, and there were over 63,000 non-combat deaths. During World War II, 16.1 million service members served from 1941 to 1945. Over 293,000 lost their lives, over 670,000 sustained combat injuries, and there were over 115,000 non-combat deaths. During the Korean War, 5.7 million service members served from 1950 to 1953. 
Over 33,700 lost their lives. Over 103,000 received combat injuries. And there were over 10,000 non-combat deaths. At this time, Steve Sautel and I will lay a wreath for our World War I veterans. Monotony Minutemen will render honors. During the Vietnam War, 8.7 million service members served from 1961 to 1973. Over 47,400 lost their lives, over 150,000 sustained combat injuries, and there were over 10,700 non-hostile deaths. Bill Hainer, a Vietnam veteran, will lay our wreath.
now proceed to our last veteran burial lot. Over 15 designated military operations have been conducted since September 11, 2001. Approximately 2.5 million members of the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, and Coast Guard and related Reserve and National Guard units have been deployed since 9-11-2001. Over 7,000 military personnel have been killed. Over 50,600 military personnel have been wounded. Major General Rapp will lay our wreath. Minutemen will render honor. Memorial Day is a day of remembrance for those who've made the ultimate sacrifice. It's a day to honor and respect those who have given their lives in defense of our freedoms and to remember their selfless service, commitment to others, and, and to remember the personal sacrifices on behalf of their families. It's also an important opportunity for us to reflect on the values of courage, service, and sacrifice that our fallen heroes embody. Remember our Gold Star families who have lost loved ones to illness, injury, and combat. They stood strong through uncertainty, and those resilient dedication and commitment to their loved ones continue to shine and serve as support for others during their darkest hours. 
Remember the men and women currently conducting military operations around the globe and the Blue Star families awaiting their safe return. I ask that you remember and honor the missing as well. In closing, I'd like to thank Major General Rapp for his participation in our ceremony today. I'd like to acknowledge all the veterans present here today, our elected officials, the Arlington Police Department, the Arlington Fire Department, and the Department of Public Works and the crew here at Mount Pleasant Cemetery. But most of all, thanks to you very much for your support while I've been here. Um, and I look forward to many more of these type of services in the future. So thank you very much. Enjoy your day and uh, keep it in the true spirit of the meaning of the day. Thank you.